Okay, so I'm going to start. My name is Mark Eating. I'm the Managing Director of Shadowcat Systems. It's a software consultancy. We also build some software projects. We're based in the northwest of England. Um, and I want to talk to you today about why I like my community and some of the people I like in the community. Um, I started off thinking I'd just have this list of people I'd give to you, but every time I sat down to write it, I came up with another person to put on the list. It started to get impressively, stupidly long, and I thought, I'm just going to be standing here reading out a list of names like a still register or something. So uh, I changed it, I cut it down a bit, and I, I thought of the people that inspired me and fitted them into um, also an idea of community models and how, and how they relate to that. I also wanted to talk about London Poe Workshop an organising event, and how last year, the London Poe Workshop, the events actually were basically conspired to, uh, to, to mess me up. And it was all because I didn't actually give enough sacrifice to our Lord and Master of Monty Cthulhu. He must be Satan. So, the first person I'm going to talk about is Karen Pauly. Um, Karen Paul is the El Presidente of the Poe Foundation. She's also on the board of directors for YEF, which is the Yaxi Europe Foundation. Um, and she's a big supporter of Pearl and the Pearl community. Um, I like her because of her attitude to people. She actually really tries not to be critical of people unless it's a positive criticism. She tries to support them in what they're doing. She tries to suggest routes that they can go forward. She's also discreet in pursuing paths forward for community projects. So she often is behind a lot of the conferences and conference work, but you don't see her effort. Her influence is there in getting things done, but it's rare that you actually see her doing it, even though she's a, a very strong force. So, ethnographically, when we're talking about the Pearl community, um, it's really hard to classify typical interactive roles and types. We function as a cyber community, and that's the channels, the news groups, the mailing lists. We're also a pseudo community, and that's when we meet up in PM groups and in our local organisations and in some of the projects. But but it's also a chaos community inside those local PM groups. As, as we move towards a, what's called also a true community, when we get micro families inside our, our groups and inside our relationships of people knowing each other. And we are naturally form those. But at our core, we're actually just a community of interest. That interest is Pearl. And that, that's where we start off. So I'm going to use a very vague family metaphor as we go through the talk today. The actual culture, the um, it fits a, a, a single model for social interaction, it's really easy to relate to, and um, our community shares some family roles. So we have this notion of the good parent. A good pa parent is the supporter in the community who facilitate, they don't lead from the front, they in fact guide from the centre. Most organisers of most events of heads of, of big organisations fall into a good parent role. So. At the end of London Poe Workshop 2009, I thought to myself, I'm going to, next year, I'm going to organise this better, I'm going to start very early. Uh, I wanted it to be more efficient because my wife was pregnant with her first child, and I thought, let's make put a small crimp on how much free time I'm going to have in my life. So I started in about the February of March 2010, and I, I, I contacted a person called Sean Tohill, who works at the University of Westminster, he's my contact at the university. And I said, right, we're going to start early, we're going to get some sponsors on early, we're going to get the promotion out early. And he said, we're having a major reorganisation. I'm really sorry about this, I don't know if I'm going to be here in June. So we can't actually start to organise it. So we had to wait until June. June came, my son arrived at the end of June, no news. July came, two-thirds of the way through July, already missed the app CNA. I get, no, Sean's got his job, excellent. We contact the dean, we say, we want to do the organisation on these dates. Are you going to support us? He went, I'll give you an answer. And then he went on holiday for six weeks. <laughs> now, this is the international man of mystery. The true name of Chromatic is actually only kept by the far elders of his tribe. Nobody knows who he really is. And whether you agree with his very strongly held opinions or not, he is a great force in the Pearl community. His calm dissemination of things is pushed to get modern Pearl out into the world, to get more books published, and to get more promotion of how Pearl has changed, is worthy of a great deal of respect. <coughs> I myself want to help in getting more articles published this year, so I, I see him as a role model for, yes, just go ahead and do it. And then we have these three chaps. Um, this is Eden, um, Garu, and um, Apiron. 
who is here today. Um, all three of these have either worked at or are working at Shadow Cat Systems. They inspire me because I actually know how hard they're working. Yet, they're also still very active members of the community. They either head up PM groups or they organize events. Garu organized Yapsi Brazil. Um, or they organize events in their local community and they contribute to pro projects. I'm not sure how they get the time to do that and do my work, but they do somehow manage to do that. And on a side note, I have to say I'm really jealous of Brazilian names. I'm going to do a very bad accent, but Eden is, my name is Eden Cardoso Cadim. You have killed my father, prepared to die. <laughs> and this is, my name is Bruno Guilherme de Oliveira. I was another Zorro. I get, I am marketing, my name sounds like marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Dean came back. It's September, and he said, yes, you can have the rooms. Finally, I've missed out on announcing the conference. I'm late in the schedule. Um, I did have Nicholas Flagg who said that he took going around the you saying, yes, we've got sponsors, we don't have a venue, but we've got sponsors, which, which was nice. Um, and I wanted to get more sponsors. Uh, London Poe Workshop is an entirely free event. You don't pay for anything, so they have to get sponsorship to do anything, and I wanted to do more. So I, I could finally go out and start getting more sponsors. I was helped by the EPO, who were going to be managing the business side of things which meant that the sponsors would have a business to talk to rather than this random group of long-haired layabouts who turn up and say, we want you to sponsor our conference. That usually helps them because they see a business on the side. So, surely a lot of Master Cthulhu would now be sated. Speaking about sponsors, it makes me think of Jamie. As an organiser, manager and sponsor myself, I actually know how hard all three sides of this equation really is. The whole method of sponsorship and the team of administration, it requires a special kind of person with a special kind of brain. Jamie's one of those people. It's really a thankless task a lot of the time. It requires a lot of effort, more effort than you think. And Jamie makes it look really easy, which depresses me because I, I sometimes find it really hard. What makes her actually more cool than that is that she's wedded to the community. She's not a coder. She's actually only doing it because her partner is a coder. And she wants to make the environment better for him, and therefore better for all of us. That's quite a lot of respect. There's very few people who will take on that task. And since I've mentioned her, I must mention Chris. He's actually very laid back in person. And in fact, I think he's so damn laconic, he didn't have something to lean on, sometimes he'd fall over. But he's also a very active coder. He's a contributor to many projects, founder of Tashken Show. He's going to be writing articles for me this year. And is the organiser of Pearl Oasis for this great event. Then he wants to top that and he goes, right, I'm going to also form my own company and I'm going to do Yap's ENA because it's just too easy for me. So, respect by the bucket load. So, we had our good parent. We also have this idea of a kind parent. These can be seen in any biological group as the secondary adult leads. Um, they take a forefront only when the, the principal requires them to do so. Mostly they support a principal lead. Added to those, we have our facilitators. These are people who often sit on the edges, the sidelines of biological group, moving into the centre to become a good or kind parent as is required. But most of the time they actually sit there, waiting for the main thrust of the community group and overcoming any aberration or obstacle. Right. One week, well it's actually nine days before the event, everything's going swimmingly now, I've got more sponsors than the year before, I've got more money, we're going to have coffee, we're going to have free food, we've got free beer, I'm thinking yes, nothing else can go wrong. I get a call from Sean, there's going to be no electricity on the day of the event, added to that there's going to be some builders in knocking down walls, would this be an issue and did we still want to go ahead? So after a quiet cry and a little bit of a scream, I said, yeah, well, maybe we should go ahead, you know, since there's a couple of hundred people turning up, it might be nice. So we booked the uni's, uh, uni's other venue, which is Marlborough Road. It's about 30 minutes walk from the previous campus, so it's not too bad. People who are staying near the area would only be half an hour away. One small snag, the sponsorship items, 30 heavy boxes, couldn't be stored at the new venue. They could only be stored at the old venue. We would have to go in on the morning of the event and move all 30 boxes before the new one started. And we could only go in after 8 o'clock in the morning, and it starts at 9.20. So I put out a little call, and this shows the brilliance of people. I put out a call, within 20 minutes I had three people willing to drive into London on a Saturday morning to pick up boxes to drive them around the corner. 
showing really how brilliant people can be. And if we're going to talk about brilliant people, if you haven't heard of Jess Robinson on Castaway, where have you been hiding or the Wicks Rock? If you haven't been politely pointed in the direction of a resource or a patch or a document by her, you are actually at a loss, and I don't know who you are. Really regarded by many as the monarch of the docks, she's also one of the most helpful members of the IRC community. You know when something's gone wrong and somebody needs shouting at when Jess gets upset, because she's just almost unfazable. And she's really lovely in person. Um, every time I meet her, I get a big smile, and it's really great meeting her every time. And I did write an article on her last year. It's there. It's on my MDK Perlu button. Um, but I really couldn't do this list without actually including her. So, meanwhile, I really was being too hopeful. For the Lord Cthulhu had not yet finished with me. For during the whole of November, it was snowing in Scotland. And then the snow moved further south. And suddenly we had airports being closed, roads being blocked up, feet upon feet of snow falling everywhere. And I had speakers who suddenly couldn't get there, because even if they could fly in eventually, there was such a backlog. And it was so difficult, they were going, oh, we can't come. Some of the sponsors said, we don't think we can make it. I had people telling me that they weren't going to make it, and I felt my event started to collapse slowly, and I wondered whether or not I should actually go and sacrifice a couple of virgins. I, I thought about it, I thought, we've got a new child, we can make another one. And the making part was fun. <laughs> Oddly enough, though, one of the persons who was going to help me on Saturday morning, uh, was called, it's called Wendy, and she was driving from Holland the day before. And I said, you know, are you going to make it? And she went, we're Dutch, we have a Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> My local PM group, northwestengland.pm, have been responsible for two hack days since I started it with Ian Norton in 2008. On the very first hack day, we took Plagger out of Iron Guy, which is the uh, Pearl feed for blogs, and pretty much we wrote Pearl in it, putting it back in to make Iron Boy. Um, then we made major changes to Pearlnet, we made it modular, added moose to it, um, and made it fit different needs that we wanted it to do. Last year we started our Spam Red Oyster project, which I really am hoping will be pushed more this year. It's a great idea and a great project. And uh, Chris and I were talking about the fact it should be very good for small businesses. We're a very small group, we're spread over a very large area, we still manage to hold monthly meetings and we hold uh, bi-monthly technical meetings. Personally, I'm inspired by the dedication and skill of the people who are in the group. And also of Ian Norton, my co-leader. He came to me in 2008 and he said, we should have a local PM group. I think he wants me to lead it. So I made him co-leader. I then helped him and supported him with his modules on CPAM. I gave him the Iron Boy project to run entirely, because he could do it, obviously. And he's become more active in the local Pearl community and a more sort of confidence in himself which is what all you really wanted. So, in many respects, PM groups are the family model that we're talking about today. They're tight and knit in the broader Pearl community. In my local group, we've moved over the past few years from the pseudo community, which is where you are the best of yourself to people. Which is when you meet someone for the first time, you're trying to be the best person you can, you don't turn up and be an asshole. You then move into what's called the chaos community, where you actually start being a bit of an arsehole. And it becomes chaotic as you start to reveal your true self. Moving on from that, you then start to get the true community, where people start to like each other for the fact that each, everybody's an arsehole. And that really kind of works. We then create micro-families inside our local PM groups. Very strong, close connections. We come closer and interact more with other PM groups. And it's always good to do that. Our PM group always invites other speakers to come and talk to us. And we also do connections, live connections on the web to talk to people. And we invited people down to the hackathons. And last year was great. Three people came down from Glasgow PM just for the day. So, I finally get to the day of the London Pearl Workshop. And a few missing speakers, but that's okay, I, I closed those holes. I had some fun shifting books. Just before 8 o'clock there were two of us shifting 30 books from the seventh floor of the building. That became four of us. There's a whole sort of thing, Tom disappeared between the two venues for about 40 minutes. I don't know where he was, he just turned up with some books, and he wasn't with one of the cars. I, I, we don't know how he got the boxes from one location to the other. I think basically because we left him looking after him, he invented teleportation and just got there. Probably. Yep. 
surely things were now. Okay? I haven't actually mentioned the stern parent, the disciplinary parent. This is the parent that leads from the front. They provide routes for motion. They often don't do that motion. They provide the routes that other road people are going along. The stern parent does not imply unkind or unfair. In their position, they must remain aloof. They can't be seen to be too weak or less than you because they're not going to be taken seriously by you. For them to be followed, their word has to be almost like law and they have to be in a greater than position. It is not an easy position to do well or one to maintain well. It is required when the community has needed them and are often dumped and ignored afterwards. In our rather disparate, divergent and distributed community, um, they're essential because they enforce a little more structure for us. They sometimes make the worst organisers and facilitators. Their skill is actually in directing responsibility. Could have actually done this whole presentation on Matt Trout. He's actually very inspiring, both in person and <laughs> in presence. One day, maybe I will do a whole talk just about him. But I actually wanted to share with you a set of links that will help you understand him better. There, there are three blog posts and four presentations that when you watch them in the order I've selected, will give you a very good idea of Matt himself. He is a leader, whether he likes it or not. He inspires people without meaning to. Whether it's good or bad that he collects people around him is actually unimportant, because he himself has a goal that he wants to achieve, <clears throat> and he does want people to be better. So you must read Fear of Following. Follow it with Love Your Idiots. And then on being a bastard. And then watch State of the Velociraptor from last year. Hopefully Matt's going to do another one this year. He has no choice. I know. <laughs> I am mad. At session. And the Iron Man Lightning Talk, which is fun, frivolous, and shows that you can do about 90 slides in five or six minutes. If you're, you know, having the special kind of crack that he's on. <laughs> Meanwhile, <coughs> we discovered, right after my introduction, Matt had started doing the keynote, that all the rooms at the, at the venue had no video cable connectors. Our own previous venue always has these, they have a built-in video unit. You have a cable that connects to your laptop. Easy. No cables. People at the venue said, oh, no, we don't have cables. So, I had to run <laughs> to a local store, it was only 400 yards, but I had to run down the road to get some video cables and run back. Meanwhile, uh, Leonard, Paul Evans, had already started presenting using an OHP and his presenter's notes that he had printed out. It's worthwhile watching, go on the presenting poll, watch that video, it's hilarious, just because he, can, he presents from an OHP. Absolutely excellent. Then in the very late afternoon, somebody caught the cable on one of the video cameras, which made it reset. So we lost the last talk and the lightning talks, which were great. Nobody had noticed. I mean, I went and looked and I went, yeah, it's still recording. No, it wasn't. There was no little red dot. It was still playing. <laughs> <clears throat> so next year, I have different plans. And possibly next year as well, I'll be back here telling you how it is all messed up. But I am going to sacrifice versions of a lot of Master Cthulhu. <laughs> the event of LPW would fail next year if it wasn't for other people who volunteered to help out. This year was testament to the fact that even in the face of quite a lot of adversity, with enough planning and with enough uh, pleas for help, you can have a great conference. In fact, our conference turned out to be better than the previous year. And we had pretty much the same number of people, even with all the snow. So I have to thank all the volunteers. They are Castaway, Edmund von der Berg, the R2, Liz and Wendy, who are the mad Dutch, Sean Tohill, Dave Cross, Liam Bocard, my wife Lee, Epitaph, Martin Brooks, Abby Greenbury, Tom and Marcus Lauder. All of those people helped out in one way or another. And I haven't actually yet scraped the surface of the community or mentioned all the other types of interactions. I also wanted to say how much I admired Stephen Little. He gives a great presentation, I'm really looking forward to his keynote. It's easy to forget that the Pearl community gains a lot from this, and he's actually quite an arty bloke, so he could have gone into the arts. We could have lost everything forever in that way. There's Jesse Vincent, who leads manager for 512, creator of great applications and solutions. Also an all-around nice guy, is extremely rational and a consistent force in the community. 
And then there's Gabo. Gabo's work in the Pale community of getting the Pullman groups working and getting them all up to date has been really worthwhile. He also has got a big push to try and get Pullman seen outside of the sphere, which should be supported by us. There is Mia Gower. How could I not mention Mia Gower? Sipanen, Plaque. That's just the last year alone. I mean, what's the guy going to give us in the next two years? Personally, I think he should come and work for me and make me lots of money, but that's a different matter. <laughs> And then we have this little project with J.T. Smith and his crew. I think there's a talk about that today. Is there? I, 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 there might be there's something about a million gamers. There's a talk about a million gamers. I'm hoping it's about this. This is an actually oh. excellent game. Mm. And it, it shows that Pool is not just a glue for the internet. It is a stable production platform for a multi multiplayer online gaming system. With about 2,000 players right now, and it was only open in October for the public, yep. public release. It can support millions. Shows that Pearl is scalable, shows that it's useful, shows it has an impact. And then there's quite a lot of other people I could have mentioned, and these are all the people I was thinking about. These are people who do presentations, these are people who run community groups or are part of big in their community groups. They're people who do things such as the, the calendars at Christmas. They're almost a, a, a hidden force. I said at the beginning it was a simple talk about some of the people I admired about the community and about organising the conference with a lot of adversity. But it was also just to illustrate that as a manager, I'm often called upon to ask, what does Shadow Pet do for the community? What does that mean in the community? What did Matt and I do in the community? And every time I get asked that, I stand back and think, we did quite a lot. But the only reason we did quite a lot is because we're actually inspired by all of these people around us. So, thank you very much.